Good evening, folks. Welcome back to another Monday Night Live stream. How is everybody? I hope you all had a fantastic weekend. The chat has been going nuts already tonight. Uh, we've had uh, well, let's have a look. we've had Tolmod Greybeard in. Good evening, Tolmod. I hope you're well. Uh, we've also had Flying Mammal in right from the start tonight. From about half seven, I think. So they've been having a good old natter for quite some time. Uh, so yeah. Welcome to you two, and thank you for keeping the chat going while people dropped in and dropped out. Thank you very much. We've also got Kyle's coming in as well. Nice to see you, Kyle. Kyle has unfortunately just dropped one of his models tonight. Not good, not at all. Oh, and he's just said he's just dropped another one as well. Bloody hell, mate. Have you got butter on your fingers or something at the minute? Have you been working with oil? That's not what you want to see, is it? So, good evening to Kyle, and I'm sorry about that, mate. We've then got Broken Legion of Gamers. Uh, or Nick. Or, as he's also been christened tonight, Bloggy, after Broken Legion of Gamers, spelled out Blog, so he's now going to be Bloggy from now on. Good evening, Bloggy. I hope you're well, buddy. Uh, he said that he's been uh, had a little bit of flu recently as well, so he's on the mend, though. Glad, uh, glad you're feeling better now, mate. Um, we've got Ian Scammons in as well. Says, good evening all from Dreary, Dismal, and Dank Cumbria. Doesn't sound very good, does it? <sighs> Doesn't sound very good at all, buddy. It's not, it's not that great here, to be fair. So, yeah. Then we've got Peter, Peter Nicholson as well. Good evening. We were just chatting tonight to see that he's not managed to find us there. Uh, he keeps missing it. And he says, hi, Andy. I found the reminder button. I bet I'm first here. I tell you what, buddy. <laughs> we're just saying uh, there's, uh, there's, uh, we're starting to get into a routine now where there's, <laughs> there's about three or four people always have a bit of a chat for an hour beforehand. Now, maybe I should start streaming earlier. Who knows? But good evening uh, to Peter, and I'm glad you finally uh, found us, mate. Um, we've got, let's have a look, we've got Mark uh, in. He says, I'm still here. I didn't realise you were in before, buddy. I must have missed your, your message earlier on. Welcome back, mate, and nice to see you again, Mark. Hope you're well. We've got Top Table Gaming in. It says, evening all. Not sure if that's Steve or Jay, but I, I did finally get to meet them face to face this weekend. We'll talk about the weekend at some point as well. But, um... Really good to see you boys as well. We've got Michael in, says, I'm here. Everybody can sit down again. Everybody's calm now, Michael. Thanks for coming in, mate. We were worried about you. Uh, and, and a happy belated 40th birthday as well, mate, for during the week. So congratulations on that. Uh, we've got Skull Munch, says, what's up, Andy? Uh, apparently, Skull Munch, don't eat the quiche. <laughs> I'm sure a flying mammal will tell you all about it. Um, we've got Adam Rogers in as well. Good evening, Adam. Hope you're well too, buddy. He says, painting tips of what? Let's just leave it at that, eh, mate? I, I think... <laughs> I hadn't even considered that when I wrote that. Painting tips. Yeah. Uh, well, it's not it's not hair tips, is it? Let's be honest. It'll be um, tips on how to paint better. Tips on how to paint faster. Tips on how to paint if you've never painted before. Um, so, yeah, there'll be a few things in there. Uh, we've also got Underdog Pitting in. Hello, Buzzer. How you doing, my friend? He says, hey, lads. Glenn Griffin's in as well. Good evening, Glenn. He says, like the new setup. Looks pro. Thank you very much, mate. We'll get on to that in a bit. Uh, Fly Mal is saying, sorry for Kyle. I think he's having one of them, one of them nights tonight. Um, we've got Matt Mountain in as well. He says, hey there, guys. Hashtag Mantic Monday. Good evening to you, buddy. I think we've had a, a, a Mantic Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and a Monday, buddy. I've been at Mantic this weekend, so yeah, nice to see ya. Um, we've got Tom Martin saying hi to Matt. Michael saying Ronnie Renton calls me cloggy for the Dutch wearing clumps, <laughs> he thinks. We've also got Mark Tukey in. Good evening, Mark. Hope you're well, mate. We've got Mark says, like the new green screen, <laughs> with a bit of a smiley, winky face there. Yeah, it's not a green screen anymore. Look, I can touch the boxes. You can make noise with them. I can wobble them around. It's real. It's real for a change. <laughs> We've got... Uh, oh, let's see, let's see, let's see, Fly Mammal's just saying hi to everybody. Cat just, <laughs> the chat just caught up and would never keep up. <laughs> You'd never keep up. Rain was first in, I think. I don't think... Uh, oh, I, I'm, I did see Rain's message. That's right. Uh, we've got Andy in from Peninsula Painting Project. Says, hey, yo. Nice to see you, Andy. Was just watching your Conquest. Uh, unboxing video tonight, mate. Very nicely done. Um, we've also got Gene in there, horrid person. Good evening to you too, buddy. Hope you're well. 
Really nice job on those um, Walking Dead walkers you've been doing as well. As I mentioned in the Facebook chat, I love that skin tone. It really does kind of, it, it looks like a walker should look. Mine, mine are a bit greeny, I think, but I like yours. Um, Andy is saying, I give up watching wrestling for this. I'm honoured, buddy. If, if you want, I could maybe dive around a little bit and kind of like, like bounce off the back a bit. and Maybe, I don't know, maybe come out through the curtains. <laughs> I don't know. We'll see what we can do. We'll see if I can make it a bit better for you. Um, well, where are we? Uh, Tall Mod saying hello to Gene there. Michael is saying, painting tips, we can talk mold lines again. We can talk mold lines again. I know we were talking about, um, I forget what it what the subject was now. I, I thought it was more around um, just hobby tips in general. Um, but I do remember the mold line conversation now. Um, Michael says, got the best gift from my viewers. Needed a couple of subs still past the 1,000 mark subs mark on your birthday. Congratulations on a thousand subs, buddy. It's it's tough going getting to a thousand. You kind of you can kind of grow, you can grow quite quickly at times, and other times you go backwards a bit. Um, but when you hit that thousand, it feels like a real achievement. So well done, buddy. Well deserved. Uh, Mark is saying it's an interactive green screen. Clever. Yeah. What I did was I, I filmed moving around boxes, and I've had a time at what point I touched them. So watch for them moving on their own, like some kind of Harry Potter shot. And you'll know I got my timings all wrong. <laughs> um, Fly Marvel saying, ah, I get to stare at Hero Quest. Yeah, is that better? <laughs> Mark says, congrats to Michael as well. Michael is saying to Mark, the background is real now. <laughs> Isn't it? <laughs> it is. Skull Munch says, big, pop, big props to Mantic for sending out my missing playmat from my recent days gone by purchase. Yeah. I've always had good uh, customer service with Mantic. The guys uh, always seem to do quite a good job. Uh, certainly, if you get in touch with them, um, they'll follow it up quite quickly. So, yeah, congrats to Mantic for that, and I'm glad you got the bits you were missing, buddy. Uh, we've got Stephen as well from Steve Small World. Good evening, Steve. Hope you're well too, my friend. Adam says, if you do wrestling entrance, which Jimmy Neal song do you come out to? <laughs> I don't. Would I do Crocodile Shoes, or would I do... Um, I'm trying to remember which one. Um, what was his other song? Um, oh, ain't no doubt, wasn't it? Ain't no doubt. It's plain to see. A woman like you's no good for me. See, I do remember it. That's how old I am now, buddy. <laughs> um, Tom Watson, saying hello to Steve. Flying Mama says, I thought you might want to sort of, you know, shall I just, shall I sit off to the side and then you can, ch you can check out the nice things. Is that better? Um, Tabletop Gaming says, it's Jay tonight. Look forward to tonight's show. Thank you, Jay. For those that haven't checked out Jay's channel, T uh, Top Table Gaming, please head over and check it out. He's he had an interview at the weekend with um, Matt Gilbert, who was the rules writer, creator of Vanguard, and also with Martin Thurwell as well, who is the trade marketing manager for Mantic. And he had a really good chat uh, about Vanguard. So if you haven't seen that, head on over there, check it out. It's a great video. I just watched it tonight. Mick, drop them a, um, a sub as well, because we've been chatting over the weekend quite a bit about doing some crossover stuff. So you'll see some of my stuff um, working with the guys over on Top Table Gaming, and you'll see probably Jay and Steve on this channel as well in the future. We've even been chatting about potentially doing a bit of a kind of a community, almost like mini con type thing maybe in the future. So we'll try and we'll have a little chat about that as well and see what you folks think of that. <laughs> um, Skull Munch is saying that needs to be a meme now <laughs> I'm sure it does <laughs> We've got Josie in as well Says hey peeps Nice to see you Josie I hope you're well We've also got um, Let's see yeah, Because I've got a new set now The monitors are a lot further away And I've had to put the writing to 150% now So it's it's bigger, bigger words But you get less on the screen So I have to keep up quick now um, Skull Munch says Loving Top Table Gaming New live streams Check them out Yeah their first live stream Last week was really good I enjoyed that as well The guys did a um, really good job I was I got to see behind the scenes There as well And check their set out I might even turn my camera around And let you check out Behind the scenes of mine tonight Who knows um, Michael is saying You should enter with Screaming Jay Hawkins I put a spell on you Little bit of magic, eh? <laughs> Fly Mala says, hey to Jay and to Josie. And Peter and Nicholas says to hey Josie, how goes it? Um, Josie's in there, the studio's looking great. 
if only you could see what I could see, you wouldn't be saying it looks great. This is kind of like this is the um this is the the one corner of the garage that you get to see and it looks fantastic and you know I've got my microphone hanging from the from the roof here now and lights around me. It all looks great from your side. From my side, it's kind of there's a beer fridge in the corner. I've got a washing machine and a tumble dryer over there. I've got sort of what's that? A Christmas decorations in the corner over there. Yes, it's not as glamorous from the other tip, from the other side. That's for sure. Um, Jay is saying hello to Skull Munch and Flying Mammal. Josie's saying to Peter, she's good. Um, Peter says he's great. He's stopped coughing now. We've also got Tony in. Mr. Spooky Thang has just come in. Says, oi, oi. Oi, oi to you too, buddy. And Tolmar says, just don't say I'm a Barbie girl again. <laughs> I don't think I ever could sing that or, or would sing it again, to be fair. And Flying Mammal says, oh, no, Greybeard. Um, and Peter is saying he managed to assemble five more Goliaths for Necromunda, that is. So... What I'll do is I'll give you a little, I'm not going to give you a tour around this kind of the set thing, but what I will show you is up here at the top, I've managed to, I've got another camera there now so we can do this kind of stuff. So what you can see is you can see my keyboard here. You can also see the baby monitor, which I should mention. I'm at home alone tonight. My wife is actually away on business um, and my little one is asleep upstairs. So if I get a crying baby, I may have to put you on hold for a couple of minutes. Please don't run off. I've got a holding screen that says be right back. Um, so you'll know whether it's be right back or whether the stream's ended. So if I've got a screaming baby at any point, you know where I've gone to. Um, yeah, so what I've got is I've got my camera up here. However, what I've also got is the ability to to come in nice and close. So if I can do some, some painting videos now, we can get in nice and close, we can do bits and pieces. It's there for when we do gameplay as well. And the way I've done it is, it's on a selfie stick. Those things that nobody ever uses anymore, the camera is on a selfie stick. So I can pull it down and then I can just push it back up again. So it just goes to show some of the, uh, some of the things that look quite professional and look a little bit kind of uh, classy are just kind of cheap pound shop uh, selfie sticks. My microphone's on a selfie stick as well, so I can kind of move it around a little bit as well, get it as close to my mouth as I can without uh, it being in shot. So yeah, it's all kind of multiple uh, multiple ways to make the, the make the stream look better, multiple ways to make the future content look better. When we start doing battle reports as well, it means I can have a table down camera. We can have another, another camera coming from the side. I'm trying to get it so I can almost edit on the fly. If you watch how the Beast of War guys do their videos where you can see them kind of off the side of the screen, tapping around and changing camera angles, it'll just speed all of this up um, much quicker. So it means I can film longer videos without then having to do four or five hours worth of editing on top of that. And it means I can put more content out. It also means that I can, um, with this new setup now, I can film, uh, I can stop, sort of uh, head off to bed, come back the next day, finish off the game, those kind of things as well. So it should mean um, the content becomes more frequent, it becomes a bit more varied, and it should hopefully be a little bit more professional. So there you go. Uh, let's see what we've got here. <laughs> we've got... <laughs> Adam is saying I'm getting vibes of the BBC broom cupboard. <laughs> I suppose we'll probably have like uh, Gordon the Gopher uh, popping up in the corner or something like that from, from in the future. To be honest, if the, if the little one starts crying, we might get Gordon the Gopher sitting on my knee. Um, <laughs> Flying Mammal says, "Fancy Kyla saying Super Dad? I'm only Super Dad if I go and go when he cries. If, if I just leave him to cry, you'll hear it on the monitor. If I just leave him, I'm not Super Dad." Um, <laughs> Skull Munch is saying, "Duo live stream with Baby Blackjack." He talks more than I do. That's that's how where uh, you wouldn't you wouldn't want it. And he's kind of, he's got a bit of an addiction at the minute to Humpty Dumpty. So you'd probably get ninety minutes of uh, Humpty Dumpty fell off a wall, which I, I don't think really people came here for. <laughs> Flying Mama says, "Watch yourself typing." <laughs> yeah, that's so I, I know exactly what I, it makes it look like. I know what I'm doing, but I can just see it on the screen. Um, yeah, as long as it works, that's it really. That's just kind of this, this is it really. I'm just trying to. 
I mean, lip, lip, I'm, I am sitting in my garage. I've got the, the garage doors are kind of behind a few things behind me. And it's an up and over door, which means the rails run along the top of this. That means it's perfect. I've got kind of lamps mounted on the rails. I've got a pole across them, which like, lets me put the microphone and the camera and everything on it. I can slide the pole backwards and forwards for where the table is. To be honest, it's it looks a little bit kind of ghetto, but it, but it works perfectly. I'm really happy with how it's uh, shaping up. Tony's saying, um, you're going to be warm enough out there in the garage, bud. It can get a bit chilly up your way. <laughs> put a t-shirt on, mate. That's, that's how you can tell. I'm proper northern. Not not like you guys down kind of Leeds way. Proper no, I don't even own a coat. That's that's how northern I am. Uh, it, to be fair, mate, it's not too bad in here. It's um we've got it's kind of underneath the upstairs as well, so it's insulated from above. All of these kind of curtains that around me kind of stop any drafts. And to be honest, with all of the lights on and stuff, it warms up pretty quick. So yeah, it's not too bad. If it gets too bad in the winter, I'll probably just get like a little um, oil radiator, a little heater type thing. But yeah, I'm I'm happy with how it's going. Um. We've got Jack in as well. Shaggy Wargaming says hello. Good evening, Jack. Hope you're well, mate. Um, Peter says that's so blue, Peter. <laughs> you want to see the piles of sticky back plastic over there as well for when I finish it off? It's not quite finished yet. I've still got some bits and pieces to do. I want to, like, for example, I've got bits of cables hanging down here at the side at the minute. They've all got to be kind of tucked away so we don't trip over anything and stuff. But yeah, pretty happy. Pretty happy with how it's going. Um. Lion Mammal is saying, oh, I just scrolled down a little bit fa fast there. Tolmart saying it looks, looks great. Thank you very much, Tolmart. Uh, Michael saying that also means you can zoom in on a magnificent beard and John Cena haircut of yours. <laughs> Cheeky beggar. It's, it's the Rock's haircut. It's just the John Cena, you can't see me one, isn't it? That's what it is. Um, Flying Mammal saying, did everyone have a blue Peter badge? No, unfortunately, I didn't. Um, Gene says, careful Andy, don't want a selfie stick in the noggin. <laughs> it's actually, um, it's, it's it's a bit further forward, I'll be alright, but I, I might just lean forward and kind of dunk my head on it, I'll be sure. You'll, you'll hear that on the microphone when you hear the thud. <laughs> uh, Ian says, what have I missed? Jo just made myself a cuppa and came back to see Andy saying, I can pull it down and put it back up again. <laughs> I can always guarantee, I can always rely upon you, Ian, for the innuendo corner. <laughs> Thank you very much. You didn't miss anything. Um, Michael is just having a giggle there. Peter says no badge, but then I didn't deserve any. <laughs> Michael says strange with this. Um, Ian says I have no biscuits in the house. That is unacceptable. Uh, Ian, no biscuits. <laughs> Jackson, where's Ed the Duck? He was pushed for his flying mammal. Tolmot said I love Ed the Duck. I was more of a golden the gopher person myself, I think. I think I prefer the Golden the Gopher. Uh, we've got Henry Mendes in. Says hello all. Good evening, Henry. Uh, Skull Munch says, "Is it cool in the garage?" No, not really. Not unless I get locked in here like all night, kind of thing. But I'm sure I'll be all right. Um, Jason was a pleasure to meet and chat at the weekend, dude. Oh, it must be <laughs> it must be Steve at this point. Says it was a pleasure to meet and chat at the weekend. Jay didn't buy that steak though, so make sure you pop in again soon. <laughs> Thank you, Steve. I will do, mate. We've got Titus Payton in says hello. Good evening, Titus Payton. Don't think we've chatted before, so thank you very much for joining us tonight. Ian says, if you want an innuendo, I'll give you one. And with that, I think we'll move on to the, the main topic of the chat tonight, which is um paint, painting tips. Not those kind of tips, Ian. Um tips about painting. So this doesn't matter whether you're uh You've never picked up a paintbrush before. You're more of a kind of a board gamer, and you're you're thinking of getting into painting miniatures. It doesn't matter if you're just a beginner, so you've got the basics down, but you'd like to kind of like sort of improve. It doesn't matter if you're a bit more of a kind of experienced painter, and maybe you want to kind of learn some little tips and tricks to paint a little bit faster. That's the point of tonight's live stream. It's all about everyone in the chat and myself sharing some of the little tips and tricks that we've learned along the way. So I've been painting for about, probably about 12 years now. Um, and I would consider myself an average painter. If I, I, I can paint to a decent level, if I really kind of take my time. And when I say take my time, I mean take a long time. Um, I can paint to a decent level, kind of um, some fine details and kind of blending and that kind of stuff. But it takes me forever. 
and I used to always try and paint my miniatures to that kind of the best level I could, I suppose. And one tip I would give you, uh, the first one of the evening, is that you should not judge your miniatures, or even the miniatures you haven't painted yet, you shouldn't judge what the job that you can do, or the job that you should do, based upon everyone else's. You should just go for the level that you want. So if you're trying to win a Golden Demon, the base coat and a wash isn't going to do it. You should take six months over it and do every little fine detail and really kind of agonize over the, the edge uh, edge highlighting and the blending and um, all of those sort of stuff. However, if you're just in this to paint your models so they look a little bit nicer than grey plastic or, or, or bare metal and you want to use them in a board game or you want to just get an army on the table quick, don't agonize over all and every little highlight and little kind of fancy and putting the sort of pupils in the eyes and all that kind of stuff. Don't worry about any of that stuff. Just um, get to a level that you're comfortable with. And for me, at the minute, that level is is really is just um, base coat, a wash, um, clean up with a bit of a highlight, and maybe pick out a little bit of detail. And that has, not only has it dramatically speeded up how fast I paint models now, it has dramatically increased the amount of models I get through now. And especially with being on this channel, um, I need to get through these models faster so that you guys get to see the games I'm playing. Um, so it, it's increased the output of the stuff. And I'm I'm no less happy with it, really. I mean, I'm, if anything, I'm probably happier that I'm getting models finished and I'm getting them painted and I'm getting them on the table. So a perfect example of this was when I did my Star Wars Legion stuff. I did it pretty quickly, but actually, from a table sort of distance, from, from a tabletop quality, you can't really tell the difference. Certainly if I was to put it on the stream, you guys wouldn't be able to kind of see any fancy blends or any fancy highlights anywhere. You'd see the, the block colours and you'd be able to tell what everything is. So yeah, don't judge what you do or don't judge the level you're at by what you see in kind of White Dwarf or what you see at the um, Studio Heraldes stuff. It is beautiful. It is a work of art, but they're not army painters. that They're kind of commission um, display painters and, it, and it's a different level to paint to that level is, is a, almost a hobby in itself so yeah don't be put off by that right let's have a look in the chat and let's see uh, what people are saying so um, my, <laughs> Michael is saying gophers duck and badgers what on earth are you talking about <laughs> forgot you yeah you you'll not be accustomed to this in the UK Michael um, we used to have children's TV on a, at a, a kind of like half three or five o'clock type thing. And in the, in the BBC, used to have like a broom cupboard, which was probably very much like this. And they had these kind of little puppet kind of sidekicks. That's what we're talking about, mate. Um, Skull Munch says, slap some paint on and apply some liquid talent or washes as mortals know them. And then Ian says this. And Peter is agreeing with it. Without a shadow of a doubt, if you have never, let's let's start with the beginner painters. If you've never painted a miniature before, or if you've only just dipped your toe in and you're just starting to paint, one of the most important paints you can ever buy, I would say, would be a, a wash. And if you go to Games Workshop, you'll pick up something like a, an Agrax Earthshade wash. Make sure you get the, the shade and not the gloss. The gloss one makes them all shiny. Get an Agrax Earthshade. Um... If you could buy it from Army Paint there, you can get a strong tone or a, um, a dark tone, I think they are. And essentially what this will do is will it will it'll pull into the recesses of your model and it will give you um, the idea of shade and it will make the highlights stand out slightly and it will make the, the sort of the crevices and the creases in any clothing or sort of um, any lines around the face. It will um, sink down and it will give you a very much 3D effect with very little effort um, if you're not doing that as a beginner painter start doing it now and you will take um, very basic blocked in color models you'll take them on to the next level straight away so yeah definitely fantastic tip um, where are we now Michael is saying the only brilliant thing GW makes Agrax Earthshade, Null Oil, Nightshade, Crimson and and Cassandrora yeah I, I would add um, I would add in, um, what's it called again? Flesh wash as well. Is it Reitland Flesh Shade? I think it is as well. I quite lose, I quite like using that on skins. 
Uh, Steve from Top Table Gaming is saying master blocking in base colours neatly. Don't try all the advanced stages too soon. Yes, without a shadow of a doubt as well. Anybody just beginning and um, starting out, the most important thing... You, I'm just watching the baby monitor there. He's just on a little cough. <laughs> the most important thing you can do is just pr practice getting that base colour on in the right places. Tidy. And if that means going back and tidying up a little bit once you've kind of you've done it, if you can get those base colours blocked in in the right places, that, that is the most basic skill and, and it's the foundation of everything you'll learn down the line. Concentrate on getting that as a new painter. Definitely. Um, Steve, uh, sorry, Glenn is saying two thin coats. And Fly Mom says all three. I'm not so sure about this. Now, I might be being very controversial. I don't do a lot of thin coats. I think doing lots of thin, multiple thin coats is almost a step on from basics. I know Duncan always says two thin coats, and I know everybody says really thin your paints down and put them on in layers. But what I would say is, as a new painter, it can be quite, it can be quite demoralizing to just to. It's quite hard to be able to thin your paints to the right consistency when you're first starting out. Um, and I think it's almost learning to uh, thin them to a point where they flow nicely. But a lot of stuff I do, personally, I, I don't do thin coats, I'll be honest. I, I'm, going, yeah, I'm probably going to regret saying this, but I sometimes paint straight from the pot. I don't always use a wet palette. It really depends upon what I'm doing. Models, if you, if you thin the paints down, use a wet palette, put multiple thin coats on, they will look fantastic, but I think that's almost the next step. I think what Steve said about just blocking them in, getting them in the right places, not doing them too thick so you kind of hide the details, but I'm, sometimes I'm quite happy with one coat as long as it doesn't kind of, uh, as long as it's the right consistency, I would say. Uh, Skull Munch is saying use a wet palette. Yeah, um, yeah I, think, I think a wet palette will, for me, there was, there was a couple of steps in my painting where it got better. The first one was I um, I started thinning my paints better. I, I got used to what the consistency was. Back back when I first started painting stuff, I didn't it wasn't really it was really hard to understand what everybody says. Thin it down to the consistency of skimmed milk. I don't really know what that means. Still, I'm at a point now where it's almost um, if you get a plastic like a, like a clear plastic cup, and if you can kind of sort of paint on the side. And it kind of runs down, but it leaves a bit of a kind of a stain behind, if you like, if it clings to the cup. That, for me, is about the right consistency. If it's too watery, it'll just run off and it won't stay, like, sort of stain behind. If it's too thick, it'll just kind of really run down slowly. That's kind of where I think um, a consistency needs to be. Um, where are we now? Oh, a lot of chat here. It's just, uh, it's just jumped on. Where are we, Peter? <laughs> Michael is saying use paint. Much easier to paint if you use paint. Peter says I always use thin coats. It saves money. Um, Adam says personally I'm not a fan of edge highlighting. I think it makes them look cartoony. Either that or I'm doing it wrong. What I would say is with edge highlighting it looks fantastic when it's right. But if you use too bright a colour or if you do too thick a line then it definitely definitely looks cartoony. Um, there's a, there's a, there's a real knack to it. I tend not to do it very much. I might um, I might pick out certain um, I might pick out certain details as an edge highlight, but I tend not to do the whole model like the old kind of GW stuff used to be. Um, let's have a quick look here and see how we're doing. Um, where are we now? lost the track now school munch is saying i use thick coats keeps me warmer <laughs> when you're in the garage you need them uh fly mama says it's hard to not mod everything i'm sorry don't worry about that. never never be sorry i need all the help i can get don't worry about that um matt is saying faces bases and banners your eyes are drawn to these parts and the rest will sort of fade into the background yes now uh, matt mentioned this last week when we we're chatting about something it's almost, if you can get the basic sort of colours on everything and then focus on, as Matt says, spend a bit extra time on doing the basing. Basing makes a huge difference and, and will really kind of draw your eye anywhere. Um, get the face right, make sure. If you can't do eyes really well, then don't do eyes. 
because there's nothing worse than a nicely painted miniature and then these kind of white blobs of one looking up and one looking down that to really kind of throw the whole thing out. By all means, practice, get better at it, keep trying it, but poorly done eyes will ruin a miniature. Not doing eyes at all won't be so bad. I, I personally, at the minute, probably don't paint eyes in unless they're really finely detailed and kind of pronounced. So, for example, I, I picked up the giant yesterday for Vanguard. The model's obviously a lot bigger, um, and the eyes are really, really well defined on that big model to the point where the pupils are actually a kind of like a little pin, sort of uh, an indent as well. So you'd really be able to pick out the pupils on those eyes. I will do it on that model. I'm not so fussed. I sort of won't spend too much time trying to do them on the uh, the Basileans, for example. Um, Peter saying, "What edge like edge highlighting? What's that about?" So I wonder if I can um, I wonder if I can get a picture up that might explain what edge highlighting is a little better than I can uh, than I can kind of give justice to. I'm just looking at some of these um, Kings of War pictures that I, I took yesterday while I was at um, while I was at uh, Clash of Kings. Which is um, the Kings of War tournament uh, at Element Games. Oh, um, that Mantic does. Can we see it in here? I guess we can see it here a little bit. So let's uh, let's fit across. It's not, not it's not the best picture to show it on, but it will give you an idea. So it's if you imagine along along the top of uh, these these here, if you run a lighter color along the edge of that. That's edge highlighting, so you can kind. Uh, I don't really. Uh, probably not this one. Let's see if I. Let's see if there's a better one. There were some really beautiful armies here. I think I'm probably too far away from the uh, from the screen to be able to actually tell you if there's a, a really well edge highlighted one. What I would say is, if you look at any of the, if you ever look at any of the games workshop stuff, you'll see a lot of edge highlighting on the stuff that they do. Um, but it's really it's basically kind of picking out right along the edges and making them uh, making them a, a bit sort of brighter, a bit lighter to stand out. Um, Marcus in army painters are flesh wash, strong, dark, and soft tones. They're so good. I've never used the army painter ones. I've heard I've heard they're good, but I've never actually used them. So um, I'll rely on your on your um, uh, review of those ones, mate. Thank you. Um, Peter is saying when it's cold we huddle around the candle. <laughs> I know what's coming next, Peter. <laughs> when it's really cold we light it. <laughs> nice one, buddy. Um, where oh god, it is there's plenty of chat tonight. Tony is saying, "Army Peter do blue, green, purple, and red washes. Two really nice for clothes and cloaks." I have to get some army painters. I don't have any army painter paints. I've never tried them. I have to get something to try. Michael saying, "Gould's." Korax White and Agrax Living Humans, Korax White and Reitland Flesh Shade, um, Fire, Korax White and Cassandra Yellow. Shall I continue? That is a really good point, actually. So what Michael is saying there is that actually you can use a white primer, so prime your model white, and then you can basically you can paint your model with the coloured washes, and it, it gives you almost a, um, an instant highlight and recess shade as well. Um, it's, it's definitely worth giving it a try just to see the effect that it has. And, and for certain things, as Michael said, things like kind of ethereal, spirity, ghost type things, those green um, washes over white look really good. Um, again, as Michael says, for things like uh, for fire, getting in deep in it with kind of a yellowy, kind of reddy, orangey tone, something like that can really give a good effect. Uh, Skullmunch says, Duncan, our painting lord and saviour. Yeah, again, what I would say is I think Games Workshop's videos are fantastic for people who have painted before and want to kind of step up to the next level a little bit. I think for anybody absolutely brand new into the hobby, I think they're a little bit advanced, if I'm honest. Um, I think that they use a lot of paints. Um, I, would, I wouldn't suggest anybody just getting started in the hobby to go out and buy 20 different paints just to paint one, uh, one style of miniature. Um, I get they're trying to kind of to sell all of these paints, but some of the some of the relatively basic and and I, and I mean that in the nicest way, um, some of their kind of easy to paint paint jobs use a lot of paint and lots of layers and lots of layers. That, that potentially with um with a decent wash and a bit of a highlight, you don't really need. I would say. Um, Scoreman says no thin coats and straight from the pot unsoaked. <laughs> I will, I tell you what I'll do. I will paint a miniature 
um, painting spray from the pot, and I'll show you exactly what I mean. If you've seen any of um, any of Luke's APS videos, he's got a kind of a similar mentality as well. You don't you don't see him kind of uh, using wet palettes and stuff, bits of plastic lids and things like that. It's kind of more my style as well. Uh, Glenn Griffin says the Lord of Layers. Peter Nicholas says when it's really cool, you like the fire. Uh, Kyle says it's all about the matte medium. Interesting, mate. So are you were a bit of a Lamium medium um, painter. Do you use that rather than watering down with water or, or thinning down with water? I do have a pot of it and I've used it to turn um, paints into glazes or into washers, but I've never really used it to thin down with. Uh, Mark says where, where I need help when to stop never feel like i finished a model but do you use protective lacquer and if so which one um i've just seen there tony below is saying that he uses testers dull coat doesn't stay all sticky like some others um i used to use the uh, the gw uh what was it called again uh the protective lacquer that they did i forget what it was called now but with a clear like i used to use that when i first started painting because i assumed that you had to these days, I don't, I don't really protect the models, I'll be honest. I, <laughs> probably because they don't get enough play to wear the paint off. But, um, yeah, I, I, don't, I, don't tend to, I don't tend to I don't tend to coat them, to be honest. I probably should, but I, I don't do it. Um, talking about when to finish, I think sometimes the best thing you can do is get to a point where you have, you've faced it, you, you kind of, you've done all your stuff, um, you've you've washed it you've maybe highlighted it do the base make sure you do the base a model can model never ever looks finished until you've based it until you see how it looks on the base and then if you think it needs more maybe go back and touch it up and kind of work a little bit on the on the edge highlights we were talking about maybe a bit more of a highlight or maybe a kind of dark and down recesses but i think for me that, that, that i like to get to that point and then i like to see the finished model on its base because it, no matter how nice a model looks, I've, I've painted miniatures and I've still got them on a on kind of uh, pins on corks, and they ne they never look right. It, no matter how well I've painted them, how much time I've taken on them, they still don't look finished. And I think a lot of the time it's the air. Uh, oh, oh, bit of a fly there. Um, it's because of the uh, it's because of the bases haven't finished them up. And as Matt said before, faces, bases, and banners, the shields, the kind of swords in the hand. Those kind of things, any cloaks, anything that kind of distracts the eye around or, or kind of pulls the eye, um, get them done and see the finished see the finished model. Um, we've got Robert Zunk in says hello, all I made it. Good evening, Robert. Thank you for joining us. I know you're in a completely different time zone, so it's always massively appreciated when you guys um, from different countries manage to tune in. So thank you very much. Um, Tony is saying to Michael that he struggles to paint flame. I think what everybody tends to do wrong with flame is they forget that the inside of the flame is dark and the outside of the flame is, sorry, all the way around, the outside of the flame is darker sometimes and the inside of the flame is the hottest part. So your lighter colours are almost in the middle and then around the base, around the bottom, you're almost getting to a kind of smoky black at times. I think, I think what people do is they tend to do the dark bits in the middle and the lighter bits on the outside and it sometimes looks wrong. So... That's always something to kind of to, to watch out for as well. Um, Mark saying that you'll look into the testers' dull coat. Josie saying loving the bases on the Fallout models. Yeah, the Fallout model they, they come with kind of sculpted bases, don't they? And that makes a big difference. Shade Spire models or the new Night Vault models, they come with sculpted bases. They can really help set off a model. But if you uh, if you just come if your models are just come with plain bases. Things like um, the GW um, technical paints that they do, where you can paint it on and it looks like kind of cracked desert earth. I think they're fantastic. Some of the stuff that you can buy from companies like uh, Woodland Scenics, all the stuff that Geek Gaming do that you can buy through uh, through Luke's um, sort of business now, uh, those kind of basin things. Michael did a, a video about the basin kit on, on his channel, so head over there and check it out, where essentially you put the glue on, they have like a kind of a mixed rock type stuff. And a few little um, sort of bushy shrub type things looks fantastic. I, I I try all different types of basin, and I tend to always just come back to kind of sand, a little bit of kind of grass flock, maybe a little bit of clump foliage, maybe a little bit of um sort of what are they call again like reed bush type things, and it always seems to kind of um just pulls it all together. Even things like using little bits of cork 
or bits of um, sort of slate chippings from from you know from the garden that type of thing. All those kind of things really help set your model apart and will will help to to elevate uh, an average paint job into something that looks much much better. Um, Adam says hi to Robert. You've got loads to be getting on with your painting table. Nice crane, by the way. Yeah, Robert has a real pile of stuff that he's getting through at the minute. He definitely, definitely is. Um, so, where are we at? Wow, it's jumping around quite a bit, isn't it? Uh, where? I've got to go back quite some time to find out where you're all up to. Um, there we are. Skullmunch is saying, number one tip is have fun. If you're stressing, try to get things perfect. It's no longer a hobby. Great, mate. Really good shout. Don't stress about it. Put it down, leave it, come back to it the next day. You'll look at it with a completely different kind of um, vision on it. Things like when you put a wash on and it's not dry yet, or you put paint on and it's still shiny, leave it, walk away, paint something else, leave it overnight, whatever it is. We'll come back to it. Don't just keep going and don't overdo it. Um, and Jack is saying, yeah, eyes, I find them tricky. Uh, I can do them. I can do them all right not too bad but to be honest sometimes i find it unnecessary um especially if it's a, if it's if it's models i'm going to be playing with um certainly on the channel you don't really see them that close on the cameras on uh, on the tabletop you won't see them that close but if you're putting them into a painting competition or you've maybe got your kind of your hero character that you really want to spend a bit of time on those kind of things can really um make it stand out uh peter seen green stuff games yes yeah, saw your figures and loved the bases are great yeah, um, Josie's channel, Green Stuff Games. Uh, she's got um, quite a bit of Fallout content on there, so head across and see how nice those models look and, uh, in those videos. Tony saying uh, to Kyle, just started using matte medium, mixed 50-50 with water to thin these paints. Made a big difference. Glenn is saying dry brushing is also a good tip. Just go easy with it. Yes, dry brushing is a really good tip. And I heard two, two good tips about this uh, recently. One is basically you need to take off more paint than you think you do. So you almost, when you when you dry brush it on, you almost want to think, oh, I've taken too much off. But then keep going with it and it will build up gradually. Um, if you have too much on, you can smear it, you can ruin the model. Um, so, so go wipe off more paint than you think you should when you're dry brushing. The other one as well is get yourself to kind of a pound land type thing and pick up a cheap um, makeup brush. You know, kind of the... I don't really know what, what they're for, but they're kind of like the really soft ones. I don't, I don't do makeup, so I couldn't tell you what it is. Um, and pick up one of those, and after you've done your dry brushing, brush the really clean dry brush over the top, and it takes away some of the kind of dusty feel of it as well. That's a really good tip that I, that I uh, heard this week. Um, Peter says, I only do the edge thing with gold or metal colours. That that's a really good shout actually. If you do gold and then edge kind of or dry brush or edge highlight with silver, it really does make the gold look like it's kind of shining on the high spot. That's a really good uh, thing to do. Uh, Mark says I tried eyes on the Walking Dead, painted over them, made the minis look derpy. It definitely does. If you and I'm not I'm not having to dig at your at your minis makers, they look great. But if if you're if you get it wrong, it it ruins the whole model. The best thing you can do is paint over it with skin tone again and just wash them. It's um, it's really kind of uh, it's something that has to be a hundred percent right. You can't get it half right. Um, uh, Jack there is saying, love those dwarfs. The three ups are cool, and those pig ogres. Yeah, the, I've got one of the uh, the three up uh, mantic dwarfs um from from when they first came out as well. And I've also got one of the, the throwing mastiffs as well. The the dogs. I'll have to kind of dig them out at some point. Um, and yeah, the pig ogres, I'm not sure where the heads are from, but they were definitely kind of ogre bodies, but I'm not sure where the heads were from. Um, we've also got Nicholas, or oh, Nicholas, did I say hello to you, Nicholas? I'm really sorry if I didn't, I, I'm sure, is that the first message you've said, mate? Anyway, good evening, Nicholas, I hope you're well, mate. Uh, I can't remember if I said hello to you already, because I learned that when you're unskilled like me, the less can be more. Black primer, a couple of main colours, and a quick shade are your friend. Really interesting you mentioned black primer. You're not a bad painter either, mate. Don't, don't do yourself down. However, you bring up a good point. If you're first starting out, and unless your model needs to be really brightly and light coloured, if you're doing a lot of white, I would I'd suggest that you prime with black. There's two reasons for this. 
One is that if you, um, it's, it's very forgiven. If you miss any bits, excuse me, if you miss any bits, like kind of in, in creases or little sort of bits of belts and things, they don't stand out like white wood. So um, when you come to kind of finish the model, if you've missed something, it'll just look like it's in kind of shadow or it's, or it's dark, whatever it is. So that's one reason. The other one is as well, is that if you can't get your brush into a certain piece, so maybe kind of a piece of the arm behind a shield or something like that, or maybe there's a cloak and you can't get your brush in kind of behind the leg to paint the inside of the cloak. If you can't get your brush in it, it'll stay black and it'll just look like it's in shadow again. So that's one reason why I would say if you're first starting out, paint uh, with a black primer. As you kind of get a little bit better, I would suggest maybe um, try a grey primer. It's a good balance between the, um, the white and the black. If you want to try something a little bit more special, prime your model black and then spray it from above um, with white, which is something called zenithal highlighting, and it almost pre-shades your miniature. So then if you do use thin coats of, uh, of paint, um, it's almost kind of pre-shaded, so it's dark at the bottom and light at the top. So there's a few things you can do, but I would definitely say for beginners, people just starting out, or people kind of painting big armies and they want to get through them quick, sort of speed painting, black primer can definitely be a friend. Um, Michael is saying, with eyes, I water down white, then lay the brush down on my hand that holds the mini and slide it forward so that there's so much on the brush that it fills the right gap. What I tend to do with eyes, Michael, to be fair, is I, if, I'm, if I'm going to do it, I start with the eyes. Don't paint anything else on, on the face. I start with the eyes. And what I do is I'll, I'll paint the white in. I'll then put the kind of the, the black kind of pupil in or the black line for the eye. Um, and then I'll go with the face, the skin color, and I'll shape the skin color around the eye. So rather than trying to paint the eye in the face, I paint the eyes and then paint the face around them and that way I can kind of shape around the uh, the actual shape of the eye that, that's how I do them anyway but it's a good point paint one eye kind of um, with the model in your hand and turn the model upside down and do the other eye because coming in from, if you're right-handed coming in to do the right eye from the right hand side is much easier than trying to kind of move your hand around and come in from the left hand side to do the left eye so just turn the model around so you're coming in from the right hand side both times. Um, Peter says he's just getting a grips with the eyes after many years of hobby, but you usually need to do them a few times per model. Yeah, I feel your pain on that, mate. Even though I've done them for some time, I, I don't always get them right first time. Um, Tony is saying, always put a drop of washing up liquid in my paint water. Breaks the surface tension of the paint wash and prevents tide marks. I've heard that, but I've never done it before. So is it literally just one drop of washing up liquid? Is that all you put in? I've got visions in my head of it bubbling up. Um, but the tide marks thing is a good point. If you overdo the wash or you don't kind of take it off, take it off a little bit, if you leave it to pool, it does sometimes leave, leave some tide marks as well. Uh, Andy is saying, I'm sure I know someone who does simple, quick and easy painting tutorials. I wonder who that is, Andy. <laughs> if you haven't checked out Peninsula Painting Project, head over and check out his channel. He's done some really good stuff. Um, there was some Space Wolf stuff not too long ago. He's done some stuff about Primaris, um, painting the Primaris Marines. Head over, check them out. Uh, really, really good stuff. Kyle is saying, Windsor & Newton Matte Medium and Tumble Dryer Water. Luke's APS has a video on how to make it. Ah, interesting. I use Tumble Dryer Water to thin my paints actually because uh, there's meant to be more imp less impurities in it because it's actually been um, what, not distilled it's been deionized I think it is by going through the tumble dryer um, I also use it in, way, in my cigar humidor as well for the water in there but that's a completely different video um, to Peter is saying that Tony also does that it's a good tip calcium Lamia medium is too expensive yeah, I bought a small pot of it, and that's why I don't use it to water down my stuff, really. Is it is just a bit a bit pricey. It'd be nice if they sold it in bigger bottles, to be honest. Um, Robert is saying... Oh, we've just it jumped a little bit too quick for me there. Um, wow, look forward. Where, how did I miss all that? That is just jumped up. There we go. No, 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 no. <laughs> this has been a lot of chat. I'm trying to keep up here now. Um... Yeah, Matt's saying, test this dull coat for varnish, and I use Vallejo thinner and glaze mediums for mixing. 
Thanks for that, Matt. For anybody that doesn't know, Matt is a fantastic painter, really, really good. If you want to see some of his painting tutorials and see some of the work he's done, he's just, in fact, I'm going to see if I can find the Batman stuff he did today because the, the Joker he did on the Batman page today was unbelievable, really, really nice. Um, but check out the the Mantic videos on the Mantic uh, Games channel of the new Vanguard miniatures. They did one the other day for one of the Night Stalker models, and it was absolutely um, fantastic. So I'll be I kind of sort of rumbling around in the background here. My Facebook feed's gone a bit nuts today, so I'm looking for uh, for Matt's uh, Joker uh, model that he painted. Uh, it'll come up at some point. I'll I tell you, I tell you what, Matt. If if you if you've got time in the background, buddy. Link it across to the um to the Blackjack Legacy um Facebook group, and that way I'll probably find it quicker rather than searching around there on the stream. Okay, buddy, thanks for that, mate. Because it is it's amazing, it really is worth seeing. So yeah, Matt's definitely a, a good guy to uh to get some tips from. Um, Tony Saint the Kyle Luke's APS does great videos on making your own Lamia medium. Yep. Yeah. Um, Gene Saint with a bit of flow aid with water to thin paint. Sometimes you use a wet palette, but a lot of time I just work off a comic bag. On a backing board <laughs> this is the all, all of my all of my secrets coming out now i tend so i've got i've bought a lot of gw paints the citadel paints and they've got the flip top with the kind of the little lip inside them i tend to give the pot a really good shake so it kind of it mixes kind of it's all um, homogenous flick the lid up and you always get some paint in the lid then what i tend to do is i tend to take some water and thin the paint that is in the lid and i almost make that as my own my, is my little kind of palette so when i say i paint from the pot i don't literally dip it in the pot and splat it on, on on the miniature i tend to use the lid of the paint to um to act as a small kind of little um little palette or a little well i suppose and that way i can kind of thin it down as i go or i can add a little bit of paint to it and i don't have to keep cleaning up the palette so yeah uh, that that's kind of how i do some of my stuff um the only things i've got with um with dropper bottles or uh, sort of airbrush paint, a lot of Vallejo stuff, so I use them. Thank you for that, Matt. He has just um, saved me um, an hour's worth of searching. So this is um, one of the new, uh, I think it's one of the new ones, Matt, isn't it? The, the, the Batman miniatures. This is part of the Joker crew. And you can see here, um, I wish I could kind of zoom in a bit closer on this. It's, it's, it's a shame you can't, it's a shame you can't zoom in on, on Facebook pictures. Um, but you can see the quality of this picture. If you want to head across to the Facebook group and check it out, um, you'll see just up close how good how good it is and uh, just how skilled Matt's skills are. So yeah, head across and check that out. That will give you an idea of just how good Matt's stuff is. Um, okay, so where are we up to now? We've got Art Wilson in. Good evening, Art. How are you doing? Hope you're well too. He says he's with Nicholas Gray. Don't try to paint every detail and limit myself to a handful of colours. Also, never hold a finished mini closer than two foot away. I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to just grab one of my miniatures here from Walking Dead. Now I've got my overhead camera and I'll show you the kind of things that I've done. So this is just to show you that kind of I'm an average painter. I'm not um, sort of suggesting that um, I've done anything fantastic. In fact, I'm even going to leave them in the box. I'm not going to kind of Pick the ones out that I want to show you. Here's where you see some of the ones that are not done as well. Um, so yeah, we'll flick across the table down. We'll pull the camera down here. So what you can see here are, first of all, you can see all the ones I haven't painted. Well, let's get it a bit closer because it should auto focus. Okay, so let's have a look. We've got Rick and call here at the top and you as you can see here these let's go from there so that focuses yeah, a bit closer. there we go you can see there that it's it's basically just wash I haven't done the eyes there's a little bit of kind of highlight normally if you, if you see on the on the trousers there you can see where I've used the let's get that one um, focused in you can see where I've used a little bit of kind of um, Different blues on the trousers. That's better. Um, but these are just sort of very basic jobs. Um, certainly with with Rick's mini as well. Let's see if we can get that one focused in as well. I, I will get better at this, guys. I promise. 
doesn't seem to be one I focus that one too much. But you can see that. I mean, even without the kind of focus, you can see they're just basic, basic colours. I wonder if, I, if that'll focus better like that. Yeah, almost. Uh, you can, but you can see there. It's basically just um. There's a sweet spot there somewhere, isn't there? Uh, it keeps focusing and then unfocusing. Anyway, um, it gives you an idea. I mean, the, the stuff in in here is, it really is just kind of um. It's just table. It's just table gaming level, really. I mean, if you can see uh, Laurie there and and Shane. They're just it's all kind of done with washes, different colored browns, spits and pieces. So big back of the main camera, we'll get this bad boy out the way. So yeah, just bit, getting the colors in the right place, getting the wash on, picking out certain bits and pieces makes a good uh, makes a good model. Um. Points of focus, Gina's saying as well. Have a, have a triad of them. It's kind of what Matt was saying as well, wasn't it? Kind of faces, banners, anything out the sides, and the base as well. That kind of gives you that sort of triangular focal point. Um, Flying Mammal says, I like to modify models too much. I end up not painting. If that's what you enjoy, though, don't kind of give yourself a hard time about it. If you enjoy the, the kid bashing and the, you know, the, the playing around with stuff and creating your own miniature, don't worry about it. Like nobody's gonna come and bang on your door and kind of give you a lecture for it. I promise I won't. Um if you if that's the part of the hobby you enjoy, then enjoy it. Don't worry about it. Tony is saying I always prime white as with black I struggle to pick out detail. My eyesight is rubbish though. What I feel, actually what well, I didn't mention this before, what I did from moving from black to white when I started using white primer, I used to prime a model white and then wash it with a null oil and what that did was it shaded all of the dark areas and it really helped pick out the um pick out the details so that's one of the reasons why let's uh, flick back across to this one it's one of the reasons why I, I i prime my stuff gray as well is because you um you still can see the details what that you can't with black um but but it, it um I'm trying to think what I was going to say there. Yeah, it doesn't block out the details like black does, but it's not so stark as much as uh, as much as white is when you're painting it. Um, Art is saying heavy weathering's good too; can hide a multitude of sins. That's how I've done my walkers here as well. Bits of blood, kind of you know anything. Uh, let's see if we can kind of see. I've got one of these ones. Maybe maybe this one kind of shows it a little bit better. Let's go to here. You can kind of see on this one. It wants to focus everywhere except on here. I need to get that one better, don't I? Um, you can kind of see there a bit of blood and guts. It really just just kind of cover a multitude of sins as well. So it's worth doing that. Um, where does he fit again? Get back on back in the box. Um, yeah, Death Guard is a godsend as well. So easy to paint, realistic when they need to look dirty. Great shout on that one. Um, Josie said about it to edit the unboxing video for Brotherhood of Steelbox. Looking forward to seeing it, Josie. Um, and thanks for the shout out. No problem at all. Um, yeah, definitely head across and check out Green Stuff Games. Um, Jack is saying a good way to save time use coloured primer. Army Painter is what I use mostly nowadays. I've struggled a little bit with Army Painter sprays, I'll be honest. They've, they've never. I've never had a consistent spray with them. I tend to, if I'm going to, I do a lot of airbrushing now as well to prime, which really does give you a, a really nice smooth coat to start from. Um, but if I'm going to use spray paints, I'll either use the GW ones, because I use GW paints as well, so it's a good match. Um, or I'll just use Halfords primers as well. Like I, I use the Halfords uh, camo primer for so much stuff. I'm just trying to think, um, have I got anything here? I think I've got some of this. I've got this Star Wars miniature um, I've been using, let's see, this one here. So this is one of their TT Combat um, MDF buildings I got for Star Wars. And this is just using a Halford's uh, grey primer. And I've literally just kind of sprayed over that really just a couple of times. Um, nothing fancy, a little bit of a kind of just brushing around the edges just to pick the edges out. 
But uh, yeah, I just use that. So that that it comes in a bigger can and it is much cheaper as well. So for terrain as well, it's worth checking out kind of automotive stores and things. Um, Titus is saying I think the pig heads come from Maxi Mini or Max. Is it Maxi Mini? I can't read it from there. Either Max Mini or Maxi Mini. Um, they probably do that. They're a really good kind of source of um of alternative uh, bits of heads and things, aren't they? Um, everybody seems to be seeing Grey's Grip too, Peter. Grey Convert used to use only black. Uh, Josie's saying that she uses Grey as well. Robert's saying he used Grey. Everybody seems to use Grey. But yeah, for, for real kind of beginners just starting out, black is, is sometimes a godsend. And it's certainly good for speed painting as well. If you want to kind of speed paint a miniature, prime it black and then just kind of almost like a heavy dry brush. Um, and I think it's kind of called overbrushing actually just kind of go over it quite heavily and it seems to kind of pick up a lot of paint that way um, And the black bits then look like the kind of the recesses in the sh in the shadows um, Peter saying that white's good for brighter figures as Andy just said also works well with washers. Yeah, definitely uh, Just missed marks there as well. He says he's tried zenithal highlighting works really nice was thinking of leaving zombies with just that Um so well, in that case then let's have a quick flick over to another game and I'll show you something that I've um, Zenithal highlighted that's why that's one of the views of this air uh, one of the the benefits of this interactive green screen isn't it so let's uh, grab go chosen this was something I did it was just so I could uh, identify the miniatures when I was kind of learning to play with uh, with my wife uh, we'll go table it down and you can see here what's oh or maybe you can if I can get it in shot. This is um, primed black and then grey from above. And I've then just picked out a couple of colours just to identify them. So we've got a, you might be able to see it better on this one. Where you can see from the top it's very white. You can see from the from the underneath there it's quite dark. And then you've just got the... Um, You've just picked out the what's it there? Whoops! Pick out the robe there and a little bit on the axe and stuff. And that's just for for board game miniatures. That can sometimes be enough, just so that when you're playing the game, you can tell one's red, one's blue, and it was really really quick to do. Mount them on a bit of cork so it looks like it's kind of rocks and stuff. Just gives them a little bit of something to to focus on. Um, let's see what else. Um. Where are we at? Oh, it's jumping about now. I'm well behind in the chat. Well behind. Um, Artists saying what I tend to do with eyes is ignore them. <laughs> yeah, I'm kind of there with you. Um, Peter seen he used them on pox walkers. Matt is saying paint the eye black, then put two small white dots in each corner. I find it easier to aim for the corner of the eyes than trying to find the center with the black. That is a really good point, actually, Matt. Um, because if you don't get them in the center, that's when you kind of get the the one eye's looking at you and one eye's looking for you kind of uh, a pose. Uh, Jack's saying, I think I now know why my armies can't hit anything in games. I don't paint their eyes. <laughs> you need to play the knife fight games, mate. Maybe maybe they've got night vision. Uh, Peter's saying, spray them white, wash them with your preferred wash here, presto. Definitely, mate. Uh, Horrid Person says, brush control is the biggest obstacle for eyes. Uh, making sure the brush isn't loaded too heavy is important too. Um... Yeah, what I would say is actually brush control in general is also really important. So, um, whilst I wouldn't kind of, I wouldn't say you had to go out and buy expensive brushes. What I would say is that my pers my personal painting did step up when I started to buy better quality brushes. Doesn't mean they've got to be expensive. It just means they were better quality than I was used to. So I started out with uh, Games Workshop brushes, as I think most people do when they're buying Games Workshop miniatures. I probably didn't know at what point they'd kind of um, run out, if you like, because they do have a usable life. I probably didn't realize at what point they kind of they were out of the, their best. The next um, brushes I bought, much later once I'd started to kind of get into it a bit more, was I bought some from Rosemary & Co., which you can find online. Um, and th those brushes really did kind of take my painting on um, to the next step. Excuse me, I just moved my chair. Um, I just found I had much more control. The brush seemed to kind of handle better of the actual bristles themselves. Um, I just found they were much easier. Since then, I've also bought Windsor and Newton brushes, 
they are a little bit more expensive but what i found is i can pretty much paint an entire miniature with a Winsor and newton size 2 brush the points are really really good on them so you can get kind of uh, really good detail they keep their tip nice um and they're big enough on a size 2 brush that you can load them up and do kind of the base colors with them as well so i'm not suggesting you go out and buy expensive brushes i'm just saying that i think that if you feel that you're maybe plateauing a little bit with your painting and um, or you're using lots and lots of different brushes sometimes spending the money on one really good quality brush can do the same job as maybe three or four different ones that you're using at the moment um Andy is saying, thanks man, my theory is you can paint it to tabletop, play, and then complete your masterpiece at a later date. Yeah, I think I think a lot of people have that kind of best intentions to do that and come back to it. But I think what you find is, once you've got it to a decent standard and you're playing with it, you kind of feel that's enough. You get to a point where you just think, wow. Oh. I'm not going to get any more fun out of this. I want to paint new models or whatever it is. And that's the stage I'm at now. I'm at a stage where I want to I want to get my, my models to a level I'm happy with. But I'm not going to kind of kill myself to, to go the extra mile. I'm never entering any painting awards. I ain't going to win any painting awards, let's be honest. Um, so, yeah, I'm, I'm, just, I'm, I'm just in a good place of knowing kind of when to stop now, I think. Um, where are we? Um... Oh, Matt's seeing the pictures on the group. I am about 20 minutes behind the chat now, I think. Um, bro, oh, Bloggy there, he's saying he's heard floor tiles make good, cheap uh, pallets. Never tried it myself. You can use kind of wall tiles and stuff, but to be fair, only if you've got them lying around, you might as well just use a bit of plastic or something. Anything, it's just something to put your put your paint on to kind of to mix it, really. It doesn't really matter what your air... Uh, if you want to make it last to come back to it if you've mixed the color you want to kind of make it last wet palettes are the only way to do that but uh yeah just for mixing and to be honest you can use the back of an old cd or something like that um ian's always said he's always used the lid when painting even humbrol paints there you go and you it wasn't just me pete and hitler says the walking dead kickstarter it certainly is and <laughs> still not finished painting um <laughs> Bloggy there saying overhead camera, you're going all Hollywood on us. I will do when I can get the focus sorted. I think because it's got an auto focus on it, um, I need to kind of get the right surface underneath, I think, so that it focuses on the right thing. Um, Flying Mammal is saying it gets fancier than that. Uh, thanks, I got moaned at for wanting to chop bits off the gobbles. Now, if that's your hobby. That's what you enjoy, you kid bashing and chopping them up. You go ahead and do it. What's the worst that happens? You've got to buy them again cost you a bit of money how much money do we spend on stuff we never use just get in there hack at the bits and, and enjoy your hobby uh, ian says halford's great primer for the win seven pound and lasts forever i'm just looking at a can of it over there um matt say uh, <laughs> jack's saying he's look he's got a halford's near him uh, matt says tips for beginners want to improve don't be afraid to try new techniques you can learn from more from getting things wrong than right and also try to learn one technique at a time two great points matt I know I said don't worry about the kind of those techniques, get the basics right, but certainly blocking in the colours, doing a wash, learning a highlight, those kind of things, great. But then don't worry about if you want to, if you're painting a horse, for example, kind of, I, I say that because I've, I've got some of the, the Walking Dead stuff with the horses now. If you're painting a horse, which has got a very flat kind of um, sort of big area, the washes don't take particularly well to it. So you might want to try blending in a couple of uh, a couple of browns, slightly different shades, kind of wet blend them. You can do that. Just just try it. What's the worst that happens? You got to strip the model and try it again. But just concentrate on doing that one thing until you get it right. Don't think, oh, I'll try a bit of wet blending. All oh, right, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to try and airbrush it, or I'm going to airbrush it and then I'm going to wet blend it, and then I'm going to try and edge it. Just do one thing. Stick with that one thing. Try and get it right and practice it. Great shout, Matt. Um, Robert says, I agree, try new things. Definitely, mate. Um, Flying Mammal saying, just not too many at once. Definitely. Um, Michael is saying, is this true? When you varnish a model, the washes flow better. Yes. So what you'll do is if you varnish a model, then you wash it. The, because it is so smooth and shiny, the washes run right into the kind of, into the crevices, into the, the creases. 
Then what you need to do is you then need to, it also you tend not to get the tide marks as well. Then what you do is you then go back and dull coat it, kind of like matte varnish it. It does work really well. Uh, Gary Hollandale's in. It says, sorry I'm late. Don't be sorry, Gary. Thank you very much for coming. Always appreciate it, mate. Nice to see you. Um, Peter is saying, better late than never. <laughs> yeah, you're here, Peter. Don't worry about that. We've got Hal Martin in as well. It says, late at the party, mate. Hope all is well. All is very well, buddy. Um, don't worry about being late at the party. It's always good to have people in the chat at any time. Uh, Gene is saying, didn't mean expensive. I didn't mean expensive brushes, Andy. The coordination from practice painting. It's why eyes are something I'm beginning painter may want to shy away from. Yes, you're right. Um, it's like I said. It's it's not about buying better brushes. It was just that brush control is a completely se separate subject. Um, a poor quality brush, and I'm not talking about expensive ones, poor quality brushes, because you can buy Winsor & Newton brushes that are poor quality. Um, poor quality brushes you'll struggle with. Better quality brushes um, will help you, I would say. Um, Nick Yelland is in as well. Good evening, Nick. How are you doing, mate? He says, when are you coming down south for that intro game of Infinity? Um, I think I've got Infinity behind me somewhere here, have I? Uh, I've got the... Uh, we've got this set here. I've got some Eugene models as well, some bits and pieces. So maybe I've only ever played a couple of the scenarios from this. I have never had a full game of Infinity. So yes, Nick, I would love to come down and have a have a, um, a demo game at some point, buddy. I would love to. Uh, Gene says they can always revisit if they want once they have a steadier hand. Yeah, definitely. You can definitely go back. As Andy said before. Go back and kind of finish them off when your skills develop a little bit as well. I've done things where I've painted miniatures, played with them for years, and my my um my skills have got much better. And I've actually gone back and stripped them and redone them again because I couldn't make the army look kind of fluid over time. Um, Titus is saying, "Don't lose fun when painting." Brilliant point. Brilliant point. It says only do stuff you really like. I quit the hobby once because of oversaturation. Of Excuse me, of Space Marines, but Kings of War got me back into the hobby because of all the popular uh, possibilities. That's a really good point. If you're not enjoying painting it, and it's not a commission job that you're having to do for somebody else, um, then just leave it. Do something else. Maybe do a little. If, it, if it's part of your army and it's a model you don't like, either don't play it, like, don't chase the kind of latest filth, just paint the models you enjoy, or do a little bit, leave it, paint something you enjoy. Come back and do a little bit more. Um, Skull Munch is saying, just buy them again. That comes out of my pocket, mate. <laughs> so no hacking off it. <laughs> Sorry, buddy. You know what I mean, don't you? You know what I mean. As, as long as Ruth's happy with them, then don't you don't cast your kind of... Um, what's the word I'm looking for? Don't cast your standards on Ruth's model. That's what I should say. Um... <laughs> just uh, tickled me that bit. Um, horrid person, uh, genius here. Nice brushes are nice, but a terrible painter can own the best kit and it won't mean shit. Worst waste of a brush is a high end one that has never seen a lick of paint. Yeah, I don't, I don't disagree with that, mate. Um, I, and, I, and I would never suggest spending um, sort of unbelievable amounts on brushes. Some people do spend a fortune on it. Um, I mean, you can, you can pick up a, a good quality brush for about six to eight quid something like that six to ten pound um i personally don't think that is too much to pay for a good quality brush that like i say i've got a winsor and newton size two brush that i use for pretty much everything from probably size zero work up to probably size three or four work um for kind of base coat and colors so I, instead of buying two or three cheaper brushes i've only bought one slightly better uh, better quality one um we've got Horrid person is saying, horse have short coats, treat a horse's coat like you would flesh. Yeah, I, and I think you have to, the only problem being, um, it's really smooth, isn't it? Normally when you do flesh, your, your miniatures are kind of that size, there's not big open areas. It will be when I come to do the giant, um, and I think I'm going to airbrush that one just to get some colour into it, some, some kind of like, um, what's the word I'm looking for, you know, like some, some layers to it. Um, Odyssey and Biostrip 20, my greatest discovery, makes stripping plastics a doddle. Yeah, it's the new stuff's um, a bit kinder to you as well, though, isn't it? I think 
Michael, listen, I know it's off topic, but are you coming to crisis this 2nd of November? I'm not, buddy. I, I can't literally can't justify another weekend away. I was at... Um, I was... <laughs> I forgot what it was called. I was at Element Games all weekend. This weekend just gone for um, the Clash of Kings, the Kings of War tournament. Um, I went down there just to kind of meet people and kind of see the Vanguard demos and all that kind of stuff. Had a really, really good weekend. Um, saw some fantastic armies. Met some really nice people as well. Yeah, I, I'll probably forget everyone, but certainly um, I caught up with um, Jay and Steve from Top Table Gaming. I met with uh, Andy Sharp from Weight of Fire. I met up with Lee as well. I think it's Lee McDonald. Um, I also met Michael from uh, from our Facebook group. I met... Oh, I'm going to forget someone now. Oh, my brain has gone blank now. I think it's... I don't want to get his name wrong, but it's the guy who was, he was playing Vanguard with Lee. Um, we, sat, we sat and talked for ages as well. I'm really bad with names, so I apologise. I also met Daniel Reed as well, who was playing in the tournament. I met Andy... Andy 2D6, Andy Ransom, had a chat with him. Um, I also met Nick Nick Williams, and I met Paul Welsh as well. So a few kind of people around the Kings of War community that I've chatted to online, but never actually got to see them face to face. Um, so yeah, it was really nice. And then obviously I caught up with the guys from Mantic too as well. Um, Kyle is saying, sorry I've been quiet and I've been listening to all your tips on painting while painting my first Forge World model. I guess that's a uh, when you spent a few quid on a model, mate. You, you don't want to get it wrong, do you? So I suppose um, tips on getting it right have been useful. Um, Matt is saying even for beginners, it's good to try and learn basic color theory, as there's some great painters on YouTube that explain it um, simply enough to understand. What color theory really does it is it is important about getting your primary colors and your kind of um, understand that kind of color wheel thing. Um, <laughs> how, how pro was I there? That color wheel thing. Um, one thing, if you're just starting out and you're you're looking for advice on what colours to use, look at sports teams sort of shirts, football shirts, American football shirts, basketball shirts, that kind of stuff. They will have bright colours that complement each other. So, for example, um, I'm a Sunderland fan. Red and white goes very well together. Um, it also looks good with black. Um, if you have things like, let's think, um, Los Angeles Chargers have a purple and gold uh, uniform. Purple and gold goes really well together. Um, those kind of things, if you look at sports teams, they can give you some really good kind of complementary colours while you're still getting your head around colour theory as well. Um, Peter saying basic colour theory seems rather complicated, but I am a bit thick. No, it's complicated to me as well, buddy. It's, it, it's took me quite some time to kind of get my head around What's a complementary colour? What's a contrasting colour? Warm colours, cold colours, that kind of thing. Um, the other thing to do as well, if you're really not sure, just follow the studio paint job because that works really well. Because somebody else who does understand colour theory has done all the hard work for you. Um, uh, we've got... <laughs> it's called Muncher <Manchester> saying... <laughs> I'm not even going to repeat that, mate, just in case you didn't see it. Uh, Hal says, how many quid in a pound? There's one quid in a pound. Um, Glyn Seymour is in, says, good evening all. Good evening, Glyn. How are you doing? Thank you for joining us tonight. Um, Skull Munch says, just one, Hal. A quid is slang for one pound. Yeah, sorry, I kind of forget that. So a, a pound is one pound, and a quid is one pound. Uh, Peter's asking Kyle what model he's painting. Um, we've got Bloggy there saying I use the army painted brushes. I'm happy with their quality. Love the Psycho brush. It's great for that really fine detail. If I'm if I remember right as well, Nick, on the army painted brushes, I kind of uh, triangular shape as well for the, to be easy to hold. Um, <laughs> I'll say it, thanks to the skull much there. Thought it was a quarter. No, it's just British slang, mate. My, I thought that's what you get when you live in the north. Uh, Gene is saying he's a sucker for Windsor and Newton 2. The two to three year old ones are getting ratty, but that's hundreds of models under their wheels worth of price. I think so too. I mean, I literally picked them up from, from Amazon. They're about a tenner or something like that. Tenner? <laughs> a tenner is the same as 10 quid, which is the same as 10 pound for you there, Hal. Uh, Mark says he whispers, bought a few 
brought a few things home from Monday, I saw. Oh. <laughs> yes, I did, I did get a few Monday things. So, what did I do? What time is it? We've got about nine minutes left. I think we've had a really good chat about hobby stuff. What I'll do is I'll put a thread up on the Facebook group. If you think of anything else or you want to chat about stuff in more detail, head across to the Blackjack Legacy Facebook group. You'll see the link down in the description below this video and we'll have a chat about all the extra bits that we didn't get time to do today. Um, Vanguard. Yes, so Vanguard at the weekend um, was because they've started shipping the Kickstarter, they'd taken some of the retail models to um, the Clash of Kings tournament to kind of show off and give some of the Kings of War players a chance to buy them um, at, at their kind of... It's their flagship event for Kings of War. Um, so... As you know, I already have the um, Abyssals I, with the starter band and the booster set that you've not seen my, me paint them yet. Um, I also have the Basileans and the Basilean booster set as well. And at the weekend, I also got uh, the Night Stalkers and the booster. I also got the um, Northern Lions and the booster. I got the tokens and the objective set. I got the nice rule book. Um, what else did I get? And I also picked up a giant as well. So the giant, I'm going to do a video on that. Uh, that'll be up on the channel this week because the quality of that miniature is unbelievable when you see it in the flesh. There's not a mold line on the thing. Um, there's no cleanup to do. There's a couple of little tips I'll give you as well about if you get yours and about how to build it. Because there's ways you can magnetize it to give you a couple of um, different options. And it means that you're not fixed with one option. And there's also a way that I would suggest to not glue it. So you can take it apart for transport and if you're going to go to a tournament or something as well. Um, so yes. That is, uh, that's what I got at the weekend. But I'll, yeah, you'll see, the, you'll see the giant video this week. Um, what else we got? We got Skull Munchers saying to confuse things. A pound is something that could be more than a pound. A pound is used for weight too. Um, Sean's also saying, Andy, quick review on here's Negan. Okay. Um, two two things on here's Negan. One, I played two games of it at the weekend. One, I played with Michael and Lee, who are um, on the Facebook group. Um, the first one, I just had a demo with Clive from Mantic. Um, both games, very different. Really, really fun. I love the balancing mechanic of how things get harder when there's more players playing so it doesn't just become kind of easy to, to push through the game there's a pull to the game that forces you to kind of to try and do it quickly but you need to do certain things in order to kind of to get out of there um what else would i say the there's some there's some really good mechanics in it anyway i've mentioned that what was that what was i just going to say there something else um I forget what I was going to say now, but I really, anyway, to summarize it, I really enjoyed both playthroughs. We had a real good laugh. That's the first thing. The second thing is, um, Mantic um, are going to send me a copy of it. So we should get that pretty soon. We'll do some videos on the channel. And I think what we'll do is we'll use one of these Monday Night Lives as a playthrough of one of the scenarios of here's Negan. What I'll do is I'll probably just paint the, the walkers up just kind of red. Uh, I'll probably just prime the um, the characters and maybe put coloured rings on the bases so you can tell them apart on the stream. But we'll do a live stream playthrough together. You guys can kind of um, pick and choose what you want to do and I'll, I'll play it out. Um, we'll do that one Monday Night Live. So as soon as I get it, you guys will get to see it first. Um... Flying Mouse in hashtag Blackjack Legacy Paint Challenge. Yes, I haven't mentioned that yet, but I'm running out of time. So I will put tomorrow, I'll put um, a thread up on the Blackjack Legacy Facebook page about hashtag Blackjack Legacy Paint and Challenge, about what we're going to do. Um, I've had a few ideas about it. I think you guys can still kind of shape it to me. Uh, you can you can kind of shape it and, and, and help me kind of craft it around. But what we'll do is, I think we'll run it over a few months to start with, um, and the idea is to either get you painting something you've not like you've not painted in a while, get you to hit a kind of a deadline or something you wanna, you know, you wanna get a unit or a couple of units done by a certain kind of time, a bit of motivation, and we'll all support each other. And I think what we'll do is, 
I think we'll give away a prize as well. What we'll do it. So you'll have to enter. You'll have to um, kind of commit to it. And every month, let's let's do it for three months. Where are we now? Going to be October. Yeah, let's do it till maybe the end of end of January or something. At the end of the month, you need to show the models that you were going to kind of to hit your target that month. And anybody that completes the challenge by hitting the target at the end of each month until the end of it. So if you hit every month's target, you'll be entered into a competition to win a prize. I don't know what it's going to be yet, but we'll we'll do it painting related. It might be a paint set. It might be uh, it might be some brushes. It might be some new models to paint. Um, I'll have a think about it, and we'll see if maybe we can get some support for it as well from someone. Um, but yeah, so the challenge will be primarily to get you painting, to get you motivated, to get you asking for help, to encourage everybody else in the group, but to give you a little bit of a kind of a push. There'll be a prize at the end of it, okay? So yeah, that'll be cool. Um, Peter's there saying, I must find the colour wheel I copied ages ago and give it another try. Yeah, try working it through, buddy. Uh, like Matt said, there's some really good videos on it that break it down quite simply as well. That was how I learned it. Um, Shaggy, uh, Jack there saying, I'm looking forward to the Vanguard launch the Atlantic. I may need to talk to my bank manager before I go through. You might do, mate, but what I would say is it's fantastically priced. I couldn't believe the price of the Giant. The Giant was on sale for 25 quid. And then while I was at um, Element, they gave another 10% off as well. Couldn't believe it. Um, that, that If that model was a Games Workshop model, it would have been 70, 80 pound. I think it's massively underpriced. Pick it up as soon as you can. Uh, Fly Mammal saying, woohoo, yes, great idea, Negan live stream. Yes, we might get you, uh, Roof, we might get you to control the chat for me on that night. Because you, you seem to be able to keep everybody in, in tow. So yeah, we might, we'll try and do something about that one. And Sean there saying, interactive, here's Negan, sounds awesome. Uh, Top Table is saying, what on earth, <laughs> that hilarious game we played Saturday night. The game is gone and it's driving me mad. I want to get a copy. So we all sat about on the Saturday night um, and it was called Jungle Speed. And essentially it was a kind of um, a really, um, it was a posh version of Snap basically where you had to match, you had to match the shapes. And if your shapes on your card match the shape on somebody else's card, it was a race to grab the wooden stick from the middle of the table. It was, and then at some point it switches from shapes to colors. Um, it, but it was just, I mean, we'd all had a few drinks. There was myself, there was Jay, there was um, Martin and Rob and Clive from Mantic and Matt from Mantic as well. Um, I'm trying to remember who else was playing. There was, there was a lot of us, but it was really, really funny. Fantastic party game. Um, I would definitely recommend that. Jungle Speed. It's about 15 quid, something like that. Check it out. Um, what else we got? Titus Payton says, also Basilea here. And gnomes, also known as goblins. Yeah, goblins are not, uh, they're not too far away as well, I think. Um, Jackson, good idea, gaming live. Yeah, it just gives us something a little bit, a bit different to do, doesn't it? Um, Gina saying, the wheel does most of the work, Peter. Great to have one in hand and get colour theory at a glance, definitely. Uh, Michael is saying, the size of that giant would, I'm just going to, I've got a bit of a crying baby there, but I think he's gone back over. Um, the size of that giant would make a Forge World model. That means five hundred pound plus, mate. Yeah, it, it is plastic. Um, what I'm going to do, I'm not going to talk about it too much because I'm going to do a video about it uh, probably tomorrow and show you all the pieces that you get in, all the different options. Just watching my, I'm watching my son on, on the monitor there. He's just having a little cry, but I think he's okay. Good. We're getting up to the end anyway now, so I'll wrap up quickly anyway. Um. Matt says, come see me at Manic Open Day. I'm doing painting demos. I definitely will, buddy. I'll come and see you. So anybody that is going down to the Manic Open Day on, I forget the date, but it's around the 10th of, uh, of November, I think it is. I'll be there. I know Jay's going to be there as well from Top Table. Matt's going to be there as well doing some painting demos. So if you do come down, please come and say hello to us. That would be really nice to meet you all. Um... Jack is saying, can you do the polls on here the way you can get people to vote what they want to do when you play Here's Negan? I'm not sure, mate, but if we can't, we'll do it through uh, we'll do it through Facebook or something like that as well. Uh, we'll do it that way. Hal says, thanks for the money, Nightline Vandy. Be well, all. Peter says, so much great advice here tonight. Thanks, everyone. And Mark says, it's November the 10th. Thank you very much. So with that, 
And with my son starting to stir a little bit, I'll call it a night. Thanks everybody that's been at night. Thanks everybody for all of your your tips. Like I say, I'll put something in the Facebook group and we'll we get some more um we'll get some more stuff in there as well. And um, we didn't touch on some of the basin stuff. I know I think it was um was somebody asked me on Facebook about snow bases. So we'll do that in the Facebook chat. But again, thanks everybody for coming in tonight. Thanks for everybody that watches this back at a later date. Thank you very much to all of my um, my Patreons as well. I couldn't do this kind of stuff without your support. Uh, and I will see you all in the next video and in next Monday night live stream. Thanks very much.